Hey, what's up guys? Chip Waters here for another tutorial on moving from SketchUp to Blender. So this is a pretty fun tutorial for me because it's one of the primary reasons I am moving to Blender as I am not an architect and I do more than just create simple vertical walls and square shapes. And because of that, I often have a challenge of trying to figure out how to fillet surfaces in SketchUp. So let's talk about this a little bit. Um, I'm going to go into this cube and select everything and I'll hit the fillet key, which is Frito's fillet tool, which is a great tool. And I've talked to Frito about the issues around filleting at length. And he tells me that it's really a function of the architecture of the actual engine. He's done some interesting work trying to fix this, but nothing has really uh, been published that I know of. Anyway, so this works pretty good. So this is, if we look at the at what we have, this, this, this is a uh, uh, just using his tool to, to bevel a cube. So, but let's say we go in here now and we're going to, this is select just a vertice. So I use a T key and I'm going to grab this vertice and all I'm going to do is I'm going to move it straight up, right? So I'm going to hold it once I get, there you go, right on the, on the blue axis. So there we go. We got that. So then I'll take this. So now let's go in and fill it this here. I'll select these edges hit the fillet command we have three segments let's bump it up to five and then we hit this button and now you can see we lost a face now this is just one face we have a couple flipped ones over here it's not a lot I can go in and stitch those together quickly but if you're doing a lot of filleting that becomes quite a bit of problem so let's uh, escape out of that and let's look at another case so now we just all we did was we race that I'm gonna take the same point and I'm going to hit the T key and I'm gonna drag it along the green axis Hold the, the alt key down to do that so now it's I just moved it out in two axes okay and then we'll come back in and we're gonna grab these same vertices this this one are these same edges this one this one and this one and we'll hit the fillet key and now you'll see my goodness that's just a mess right and sometimes it'll even tell you it's not going to be able to do it so so we've basically hit the edge already with this very simple shape. We understand that fillets in SketchUp don't work very well. That's one of the problems. Um, let's take a look at another problem. Okay, so the next problem, I'm going to basically back up to something I know that we know can kind of bevel. And I'm going to take and I'm going to put a circle right here. And I'm going to push-pull that circle. Okay, and we know that if I select just this and hit the fillet key, that there's a good chance that's going to fill it right but look it puts a, a polygon in there so if I click out of here I have to actually delete this polygon for that to work so uh, the other thing I might do is come in here and let's grab another circle and let's put it here and let's push pull it up through here and select the whole thing group it turn off wireframe select this and select this and let's use their uh, boolean commands which aren't great but they seem to work fine here for this this particular example and now let's go ahead and take all of this select everything and let's fill it this let's do point one a small one okay and see what happens so this basically says it's not going to work right so let's go a little smaller than 0.05 here and well that's about as small as we get so let's confirm the generation and now you can see that We've got something, but we've got a lot of missing stuff. There's going to be a huge amount of stitching that has to go into fixing this up, this particular model up. Um, and so, um, exit and undo and undo and undo. So now we have these two. Let's take a look at another relatively simple use case. I'm going to just select this edge, hit the fillet command, and hit render and you'll see that while it did a pretty good job it didn't trim these top two areas so we have this overlaying so we're going to have to manually figure out how to fix that undo and let's take a look at another edge case fill it this hit return and now we have again a section up here that we want filleted that did not get filleted i think so i'm going to save this file and let's go over to blender and take a look at it so how do you use the bevel well first you need to be in edit mode and you need to select a number of edges you want to bevel. And then you can go down to Mesh, Edges, Bevel, Control B, or you can do Control E and Bevel, or you can just use a shortcut, which most everybody does, which is Control B. Now, once you've done that, you drag your mouse in and out to get a bevel, the size of it, and you can scroll your mouse wheel 
to get the number of segments in the bevel. And that's all there is to it. So here we are back in Blender and we just imported these OBJs from SketchUp and chances are if I tab into this you're going to see some funky stuff like like uh, see all these little blue lines and everything they represent some double stitching I might want to be able to I can probably fix it manually but the easiest way to do is go into our vertex for this and say clear custom split normals data and that's going to help because then when we come in here we'll just select all control E for edges edge data and we're going to say clear sharp and that's going to get this mesh into a form that we can use so first off I can see all these little triangle polygons are going to create problems right off the bat when we try to bevel so one of the things I'll do is actually before I get started with that let me just go back tab out of that let me do the same thing right here say clear split normals data and then let's go into the tab and control E and edge data clear sharp tab out of there tab back in here so here we are back into this so I want to basically get rid of all of these if I can and I can do that in and I can do that in blender pretty easily I can do it pretty easily first I want to go into edge mode and then I tap the C key and then I can just use brush select to select all these very similar to what we're used to using the eraser key and I can scroll the mouse key up and down to make this little circle big, bigger once I get that done I can right click or hit enter to exit and then I'll go into my X button and I'll say I want to dissolve those edges. It's going to keep two of them and because it keeps two of them it's going to create a problem for us and let me show you exactly what that problem is right now. Let's go ahead and deselect and select this and control B to bevel and as we do it you see that we've got this kind of weird thing going on over here because of the fact that these lines are going up there. That's one of the reasons for it. So I'm going to undo that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the knife tool. And I'll hit K and I'll snap right here and I'll, I can hit C, drive it straight down to here. Then I'll click, hit E to start a new cut. Snap here, snap there, and then hit return. So now I've got these two. Now I can just go over here and hit this and this and X and dissolve those edges. And now watch what happens when I hit the bevel key. I'll still have a problem up here, which we're going to fix here in just a second. But now when we hit the bevel key, look how nice that works. Works beautifully. So uh, the thing I want to show you also, I'm going to select all of these edges around here, kind of like what we were doing earlier. And I'll hit Control B. And now look how nicely that works. So that, that doesn't throw any errors. It works just perfect. So that's kind of a nice... Uh, a nice thing and remember we're in edit mode right now so we're adding these vertices in edit mode okay I'm gonna undo that let's take a look at even this kind of bevel works pretty nicely you can see I'm sorry tab back out to our objects select this one and then select the second one remember we always take the first from the second we'll do a difference so now we have this we can tab into this if we wanted to select this edge loop we'll come in here and we'll hit the alt key and select and we hit the alt key and select or shift and alt key and select both so now we have both control B and beveling works fine there as you can see so let's go ahead and let's make this look smoother when we when we get out so let's go in here we'll set this to smooth and we'll go over here to our vertex and we'll see we're on auto smooth angle 30 uh, if I turn it off you'll see this is what we would get so we'll turn on auto smooth. I think 30 is about right actually on here because we want to maintain this. So if we want to just bevel this whole object, right, um, which is pretty cool. Uh, let's talk about that for just a quick second. I can add a modifier. And a modifier is something that gets applied at the object level. And we'll go in here and we'll say a bevel modifier. And right now we can set the width and the segments. But as I do this, you'll see that... We're going to get some interesting little errors there. So one of the issues that we have here is that we are actually beveling all the different lines inside of here also. So all of these are getting beveled, you can see. If I turn this on and off, there it is. So these are all getting beveled. So what we want is we really want to set this to angle. And now it gets a much we have a much better mesh than what we're using. And I might want to just I don't know, make the segments even higher if I want to. And we'll tab out, or we'll uh, 
look at this and we can see it looks pretty darn good pretty happy with the way that that turned out so you can see this really worked out pretty well and one of the nice things about this is that we can actually change the width of this if we want to at any time not only can I change the width but I can actually come in hit the tab key so we're doing a manual bevel here and then we tab out and all of our other bevels are still applied so this is a great finishing touch to add a tiny little bevel after you basically built your form it's a uh, great workflow and one that is used quite a bit in the boolean and modifier workflow that we're going to be continuing to talk about one other thing is we didn't talk about this clamp override watch as i change the width of this you'll see that it, it kind of gets to a maximum number no matter how large i go it just gets to a maximum number about looks like 14 centimeters or maybe 12 centimeters is the max it's going to get to so let's talk uh, talk about that a little bit i'll put it up at 17 and let's look at this in a wireframe mode and you can see that we don't have any overlap we know for a fact that everything is good is is pretty rock solid on this where we have the modifier actually affecting all of the angles that are sharper than 30 degrees here I'm gonna turn this off and now you know that it just went larger now you may look at it and go wow I don't see where there's a mistake and a lot of times there may not be one meaning it might be you may not find one so clamp override doesn't always make sure that you're going to have the largest possible filleting now i'm going to go ahead and add some more and at some point we're going to see that this is not going to work right so let's see i think right about here we're starting to see some weird stuff going on here can you see right in this area and we back out so that's probably you know some of the areas that the, the, the override is creating problems for us is right in this area right here so anyway it's a use it at your own risk a lot of times you can clamp override and then apply the bevel which when you apply the bevel it basically turns it into a full mesh so it occurred to me as i was watching this video that i never did show the worst case filleting instance that we did show in sketchup so let's do that real quick so here's a cube it's an object uh, and i'm going to basically add a bevel modifier i could do this inside of edit mode as well but I'm, it's easier to show it here so let's just go ahead and turn on the bevel modifier there it is let's tab into edit mode let's grab this vertice and let's move it straight up so that works let's move it to the left on the green axis that works let's move it here that works let's just drag it all around you can see that works just fine so, so the filleting is well done in blender and it doesn't break as easily it does in sketchup okay let's turn a matte cap on and look at this a little bit and talk about when and why we use bevels so one of the advantages of beveling in blender over sketchup is the fact that now you can actually create products products with their own bevels and the workflow is pretty interesting because of the fact that you can use these modifiers there are a bunch of add-ons like hard ops that actually use a lot of different modifiers and they chain them together and that's a topic for another day there are some pretty interesting ways of modeling and uh, working with bevels and the bevel modifier so thanks for watching